Hello and welcome to this short series. This is Whittle Development and Mini Whittle, and I'm Lynn Langett. What is Mini Whittle and what's Whittle? Well, Mini Whittle is a lightweight runner for scripts that are written in the Whittle or WDL workflow definition language. Both Mini Whittle and Whittle are open source. Also, all the examples that we'll be covering in this short course will be on GitHub, so all the codes on GitHub. If you're unfamiliar with Whittle, uh, there is a, another part of this course called Learn Whittle, where you can review core uh, WDL concepts, such as how to write a workflow, how to write tasks, so on and so forth, and I'll link to that. Currently, the Whittle language is used most often in bioinformatics or genomic workflows, but it could be applied to other domains, and it's used by a number of research groups, uh, commercial entities. Some examples of, of teams I've worked with are from the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard and uh, CZI uh, Bioinformatics, as well as the Imperial College of London. There are many, many others. This course is designed for people who will be using or running existing Whittle scripts or modifying them, and also it will have some advanced concepts at the end for people who would be writing Whittle scripts from scratch. The objective of the short course is to learn to use the Mini Whittle library to evaluate, parse, visualize, or run Whittle workflow script files on various environments. For most of the course, we're going to work with a single machine. I'm going to choose to use a virtual machine in the cloud, but you could just as easily run it on your own laptop. Now, in production situations, Whittle workflows are often used especially in bioinformatics, with very, very large amounts of data. So they'll run on clusters of uh, machines. And it could be an HPC cluster on-premise, or it could be or Docker container images orchestrated by various orchestrators or backends that can work with Whittle. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So in this course, uh, we'll look at the tools. So the Whittle language, Mini Whittle, the dev environment, uh, workflow scripts and sample data, and we'll be working through patterns and examples. The course will flow as follows. Uh, we'll have the first section will be, and these will all be short screencasts, will be a verification of the Mini Whittle dev environment setup. The second will be uh, working with a Hello Whittle file just to understand the various options with the Mini Whittle tool, so Mini Whittle check and Mini Whittle run. Then we'll work with a single uh, bioinformatics tool example file. Uh, this is Chrome Counter. So we'll simply uh, count the chromosome coverage of an of a input sample file. And then uh, we'll work with a more real world like example uh, from the Broad Institute called uh, uh, Rep Assembly Whittle. And then we'll get information about how to learn more and next steps. The prerequisites for uh, following along. You can either just watch the course or you, if you want to set it up yourself. So you want to pick some machine. You could use your local laptop or a cloud VM. You want to configure per your OS. Um, Linux is actually the simplest. It can work with Mac, but there are some uh, things you need to check because of the uh, Docker dependency. And this is in the MIDI Whittle documentation. So I actually recommend Linux. And the easiest thing is just to get a cloud VM. Um, you're going to want to verify your Python installation because MiniWiddle is dependent on Python and verify your Python package manager. You're going to need either pip or conda. Um, and what I'm going to show in this series is the cl a cloud VM from Google Cloud. Um, and I'm just going to happen to pick one that's called a notebook instance because it already has Python on it. So it's a Linux machine with Python. It just means that I have to install less things. The MiniWiddle dev environment um, is what's called a data lake pattern. And what this means is that you have some sort of file storage, uh, whether it's on your local machine, whether it's on a bucket on a cloud uh, file storage, whether it's on a, a file cluster uh, on a, a file server in your research environment, or, or whatever. It's not a database. It's, it's some file storage where you're going to have your input and config files and your output and job log files. Uh, when you want to compute on your input, you're going to then uh, process that with the Whittle file, and you're going to run that, in this case, with Mini Whittle. Now, when you're using a single machine, 
Uh, MiniWiddle uh, is a Python-based library, so you need Python. And it runs uh, using Docker and Docker Swarm. So Docker Swarm is a really lightweight container image coordinator. Uh, so there is a dependency in MiniWiddle on Docker Swarm. Now MiniWiddle is uh, open source and in active development and there are some um, developments around different types of backend plugins. As of this recording, there is AWS Fargate, which is a container manager, for example, available on GitHub. And um, also there is uh, extensibility in MiniWiddle, so more backends could be written for it. Now, optionally, in your workflow, you might um, use containers that are published somewhere else, that's what's shown on the right here, that are contain or wrap uh, bioinformatics tools. So one example of that would be the Broads GATK or Genomic Analysis Toolkit. The Compute Cluster in uh, the case that we're working on will be a single machine, but as I mentioned previously, when you're running anything production size, you're going to have multiple virtual machines. It could be tens, hundreds, thousands, or in some cases even tens of thousands. So the first uh, exercise will be Hello Whittle, and I'll go ahead and next screen cast and uh, we'll verify the environment and then we'll get into Hello Whittle.